Ah, yes. It's a while since I've done one of these lovely pink USB power supplies, particularly such an ambitious one. This is quite a common one on eBay, where it says it's rated 3.1 amps. So let's put that to the test, shall we, by seeing how well it holds up. So we'll stick uh, this uh, USB voltage and current monitor. I'll put that out the way. That's just about to avalanche onto the bench. Yes, yeah, so much stuff. There's, there's another lamp that's just avalanched onto the bench. It's, it's a veritable avalanche. So it's showing 4.97 volts. That's a good start. So let's plug this uh, load in. It says 0.93 amps. Okay. And it's, it's dropped at that point down to about 4.96 volts. Okay. Let's try turning it up. So now the voltage has dropped to 3.87 at 1.35 amps. And that does kind of suggest that this is not actually a 3 amp power supply unless you're willing to just bend the rules a little bit and say that technically speaking it's a 1 amp power supply with 3 sockets and therefore if you use 1 at a time and multiply it by 3 it's 3 amps. It doesn't really work, does it? So um, on the basis that it's not a happy bunny right now, let's uh, put it out its misery by opening it up and taking a look inside. Now, I don't see any obvious mechanism for open opening this. I think it is glued shut. I do see a sort of seam there. I think we shall bring in the special plumber's tool. And we'll just give it a wee squeeze. Oh, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, that's kind of popping off then. That, oh, yeah, there we go. That's all we need to do. I will say it's got uh, LEDs inside, which makes it light up. Okay, it still doesn't actually deliver the current required. Oh, it's got... Oh, blimey. That's interesting. It's got two metal pins in here that make the connection. And they just kind of slide into this, I guess. What actually holds them in place? Is it luck? Ooh. Okay, radio. And it does actually have a chip on it. That's quite neat. I quite like the fact it's got a chip. That's a good start. And the chip is called, I'm going to have to go a bit closer than this. Where's my little, uh, where's my little microscopy device? For those asking, this is a little microscope that I've burst the end off here that comes from eBay. It's a generic Chinese popular item. It's got a little LED in the end and it kind of works pretty well at, at uh, focusing on smaller objects. So let's see if we can find this chip. Let's see if I can even find the chip in the circuit board. Oh, there's the chip. And the number on it is HC2513. So I'm just going to note that down. HC2513. HC2513. And I'll take a wee look at that. Remember to turn this off, because unfortunately, if you leave it on, which is very easy to do, it just runs the batteries flat very quickly indeed. So, um, <clears throat> let's take a look at the isolation to the output, which is not overly clear. Right. Oh dear. That's not very good at all, is it? The isolation is... <clears throat> This white line here, white line, uh, which then goes up here, round here, over here and over there, it's not very good isolation. It's not the required distance that's, uh, you know, that's, you know, required and, well, <clears throat> shall we say, safe products. It's not got the proper isolation. I mean, it's actually, it's more than a millimetre for most of it, which is better than many. Oh, there's a little resistor just... Tagged. Oh, that is that a surface mount resistor that has not quite soldered. It's oh, that's weird. It's a little surface mount resistor that's supposed to cover these two pads, but has slipped up. Oh, you know what that is? That looks like it's the. That looks like the component because there's a diode to it that is supposed to filter the spikes from the transformer. It's probably across the transformer's primary. Yes, it is. Uh, so it looks like the spike filter that's designed to protect the chip from the spike. So this probably wouldn't have lasted too long in proper operation because uh, although it's nice that it's got that, it's kind of, it's not working because uh, there's a bit completely missing, the resistor. Oh, well. Uh, right, so there is... 
Let's take a look at the... So the mains comes in, and it goes down to this bridge rectifier, and there's a little fusible resistor in the series to minimise the bang. The output goes straight to an electrolytic capacitor rated, which I've been fingering, 4.7 megfarad, 400 volts, which then feeds the chip, which then drives the little transformer. So um, let's uh, pop that transformer out. Let's not use subtlety to this. Let's uh, just smash it out. Let's get the circuit. I quite like the circuit board, actually, with the USB ports on it. I'm almost tempted to keep that because it's quite nice. Although it's kind of, you know, it's just pointless. It does have four LEDs, which is quite smart. And I think it's got it's got a series of resistors for the different... Oh, has it? Maybe not. No, it's got a resistor per LED. I don't see... Oh, I do see different uh, different resistor arrangements for different sockets to for different type of devices. Uh, let's get this transformer out. Let's not use any subtlety at all here. Let's uh, see if I can just burst it out. Or, you know what, I'll, I'll desolder it, I'll take it out properly, I'll be back in a moment. And the transformer's out. I also took the opportunity to look up that chip. The chip is kind of specialist, it's uh, it's not really got much of a data sheet. I found the company that makes it, and the only data I could find was basically the equivalent of a data sheet, but actually listed in basically a frame and an HTML page. So it wasn't actually terribly helpful, it didn't show schematics and stuff like that, but it's all pretty much textbook stuff. It's very basic. It's just, you know, current sense resistor. It's got the little uh, bootstrap winding with the diode and the capacitor just to give a power supply for the chip. It's got the little filter network, which, as we saw, wasn't really quite complete. The resistor fell off completely while I was desoldering. So there's the resistor here. It's supposed to be across these two pads, but one of them's got no solder on it at all. So that probably explains that. Uh, this little module, the the actual sockets in the front has four blue LEDs, quite nice actually. Uh, the little rectangular LEDs with the clear top, quite smart, and they're running about two milliamps each. And two of the sockets just have the data pin shunted together for that sort of standard, you know, one amp thing. And there's one socket has the resistive bridge, which is probably to fill Apple products. Uh, into thinking they're connected to an Apple compliant charger. Uh, not that I'd recommend plugging anything that costs six or seven hundred pounds into one of these. So here's the transformer, and as we already know, it uh, can be a bit boring when I take these to bits, but you know what? Let's take it to bits, and if you get bored, you can always skip to the end and hear me ranting about its electrical safety standards. So let's get this off the tape using cheap snips because I don't want to use good quality snips in this. Certainly not to separate ceramic. Now I'll try and hold it up as close to the iPad as possible, but it kind of lose, loses focus. Because it's fixed focus, it'll lose focus if I go too close, so maybe not then. And I shall just actually crack the ceramic here, like this, because it's just easier to do it that way. Scrunchy. Using the marvellous plumber's tools here. I say plumber's tools, I used to have a set of these when I was doing electrical installation. Well, still do electrical installation because they're quite handy for certain things like uh, tightening up uh, bushes and stuff like that. Uh, this isn't really coming off as quite as easily as I expected. Where's the, where's the toy bucket? I may have to abuse my electrical snips, which is a terrible thing to do with these. Ah. Uh, there we go. That'll do it. Right. So I would guess, and previously we've found that the feedback winding is possibly the lowest priority winding, so it's sometimes the outside. Uh, sometimes the secondary winding, which is going to these two pins here. This is when I should actually have put my other glasses on. I'm going to do that right now, in fact, because uh, it will give me much better visual acuity. If that's the correct word. Oh, that's much better. Super zoom vision. Right. Okay. So the first winding is actually, looks like the output winding. Is it the output winding? No, no, it's not. It does look indeed like it is one of the feedback, the sort of, the... Oh, you know what? That's slightly disturbing. I don't like the fact 
that the let's see if I can get uh, show you this that the output winding is so tightly profiled with the what looks like the feedback winding wound right over it, but right down onto virtually making contact with the actual copper itself. Oh, that's uncomfortable. Oh, I can see that. Oh, blimey, that's uh, that's shit. That is unpleasant, which is exactly what we like. Perverts that we are in terms of electrical safety. Oh, yes. Right. So, scary winding that is just too close to the bottom here. Uh, can I take that winding off? Is that going to help if I take this one off as well? I think that winding is probably the primary. Am I going to be able to get this off? It's always so fumbly. Or is that trapped by another winding? Let's just snap them all off. That's me completely lost track of the moment. Oh, there we go. This might actually be then uh, part of the primary. Or is it the feedback? Not sure. I should have paid more attention. I didn't. So let's unwind that and see just what sort of separation there is. I think we've already seen enough to say that, you know what? Um, this transformer is not suited for fingering of outputs. Oh, that's just so unpleasant. Oh. So that probably was, that winding was probably the, the bootstrap winding that's wound on the outside. Then would come the uh, next winding will most likely be the secondary. And honestly, I can see the copper here. And the other ones were just pretty much on that. So really, that's just not, not good at all. It's so common with these. The only thing between you and electrocution is basically a layer of Varnish. And quite frankly, I don't trust varnish. Particularly when it's being heated up and cooled down, it, you know, so that you end up with a situation where it just gradually nibbles its way through. And it makes you think that, you know, they could test these things and they might pass a test. Quite heavy winding. Look at that. It's only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about ten turns. So I'm guessing then that it is just the primary is purely on the middle of the core. So let's get this one out. Yeah, I, I often think you could test them electrically. You could do the high voltage test. But over time, that lacquer movement from thermal expansion contraction and just general oxidation wear and tear over time that, you know, could just end up breaking through. So now what we've got, we've got this uh, inner winding, which will just be shitloads of turns of the primary. Which is going to be quite flimsy, so there's a chance that I'm just going to break it if I try and get this tape off. But unfortunately, the tape has been wound on with such force uh, with that fairly heavy secondary winding that it's uh, pressed the tape. Again, the, the only thing between the secondary winding and the mains primary on the inside is this tape and that secondary winding, you can actually see the sort of lightness of the copper underneath where it's been pressing through into it, but there probably is still a layer of insulation. But, you know, in the past, mains transformers used to have called what are called split bobbins, and it used to be two completely separate bobbins, one for the mains voltage winding and one for the low voltage winding. But, of course, with modern transformers, even in Apple products and other things like that, you, they just wind it all in one little transformer. And the, what, the insulation relies on separating the windings and actually making sure they don't come too close to each other where they go out. So there's a bit of science to it. And that science is not adhered to terribly accurately in places where the people making the transformers are just shown how to just thread wire on a winding machine and just batter these transformers out on a basically paid per piece type of arrangement. So that's where uh, electrical standards fall somewhat. So, yeah. Ooh. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 
23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Oh, this is going to take a long time. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I think that was 50. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, Uh, hundreds. Yeah, this is where this is where it's going to get boring. Okay, I'm at about a hundred turns, and the novelty has just worn off. Right. Okay. So synopsis in this transformer not enough separation. It doesn't really matter because the circuit board itself doesn't have enough separation. There is a white line here that is hiding the fact that uh, the output is actually going closer to the main side than at any other point here. It's this the white line is a clue, you know, they're trying to use it as double insulation. So this thing is not electrically safe. It's not up to our standards. And neither is the transformer. It's just, you know, the circuit board's not good enough. The transformer's not good enough. It's not good enough. I wouldn't recommend using these. The plug assembly is quite interesting. These little bits in the circuit board are just pinched together so that when you, the circuit board's pushed in over those pins, it just pops through and it sort of wedges on them. It makes a decent electrical connection. Although I will say that one came quite close to the body of the transformer. I'm not sure if the ferrite is terribly conductive or not. This is where people are going, oh, ferrite isn't conductive at all. And others are going, some is. Yeah. Although having said that, you'd never know it when you've got 240 volts against it. But yeah, okay. Right, well that was interesting. It was fun to take, to, it was well worth the money just to take it off. Oh, there is one thing. Look at the size of that diode. That is a three amp diode. It's just like, it's it's the bit that's three amp, I guess. It's got this little class Y capacitor, which is largely responsible for that sort of inroad of uh, copper into the sort of isolated area. Yeah, it's, it's odd. It's, it's interesting, but rubbish. No, so uh, definitely I would say you don't really want to buy these because A, they're not 3.1 amp, and B, they're not safe, but fun to take to bits anyway.